ceviche, a little aloha in our day. Spread a little aloha around the world and breakfast with Bob. Pacho Man, thank you very much. Welcome everybody to Breakfast with Bob, St. George edition. My name is Bob Babbitt. We're brought to you by Master Spa, Zion's Bank, Quintana Roo, Forum Smart Swim Goggles, Clash Endurance, Premium Plus Sports, and of course, our Challenged Athletes Foundation. Our next guest, oh, I don't know, 26-time Ironman finisher, 20 Ironman podiums, 14 times. This will be 14 with yeah. St. George, Kona slash St. George uh, participant. And five seventy point three wins, eight Ironman championships, <laughs> thirty six seventy point three podiums. It goes on and on. <laughs> Lindsay Corbin joins us. How you doing, Lindsay? Good, thank you. <laughs> Such a treat. I Everything know. going well? It's been a while. <laughs> it's been a while in person for sure. Yeah, for sure, definitely. Yeah, everything's good. I mean, I feel like we're back. You know, I've just been around this week and seeing people and catching up with people, and it's like this is real. This is actually happening. So. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> now, this is this course seems like it should suit you well. Oh, yeah, I'm into this course. You dig it, right? <laughs> yeah, every Ironman I've won has been one of the harder Ironmans. Right. So um, I consider myself a strong person athlete. And so, yeah, I look at this course. I've been training on it the last couple of days and have covered, you know, all the distances on it broken up over the yeah. last few days. And, um, yeah, it's going to be – it's definitely a world championship worthy event. That's right. I mean, yeah. we're talking, what, over 7,000 feet of climbing on a bike and yeah. 1,500 feet on a run. It's, it's brutal. Yeah, and then you have the conditions as well. You were know, you riding yesterday be... during that tsunami no. wind? <laughs> what <laughs> no. the hell? Yeah. I did my run yesterday, but, okay. yeah, the, I mean, yeah, it's crazy. Like today, perfectly calm out. It yes. could be a really fast – bike course run course day and then yesterday it was insane i mean sand blowing oh, and yeah <laughs> what's better for you uh i mean the tougher the better i think for yeah, me i mean yeah. i definitely ultimately i'm looking for a challenge and the more challenge we can be sort of the more gratifying it is and um being a veteran of the sport i think you can take a lot of tools from your toolbox on those tough days and capitalize on them so yes. um yeah and i just consider myself a strong athlete so if it's going to be Windy, hot, I, I will embrace both of those. <laughs> when, when you have your flat, fast races, mm -hmm. it, it's, it's hard when you got all the young talent that's coming in, right? <laughs> yeah. You got some really fast people out there who are just hammering. But, but when the course is like this, mm -hmm. when it, you know, you're up at altitude yeah. and you've got climbing and you've got strategy, right? Yeah, it's, yeah. And you can't be freaked out, okay, I'm a minute or two down out of the water. Who cares? Yeah. It's the beginning. It's a, that's a cocktail weenie. It's been a conversation. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So is, how do you approach when you do a race like this that, that does take more, it takes thinking, right? It's yeah, not yeah. just a put your head down and go. Yeah. Well, I think that that's always been my allure to Ironman racing is it's the full package deal. Mm -hmm. You know, with a half Ironman, I think you have to be obviously extremely athletic and physically talented, but maybe you can make mistakes on your nutrition and still mm -hmm. pull it off in the race. And so, yeah, for me, I always look at Ironman as the full meal deal. Like you have to have, you have to be mentally tough. You have to be um, really smart with your racing as far as like pacing and nutrition and um, hydration strategies. And then you also have to be physically fit as well. Um, so kind of for me, yeah, Ironman is you get to combine all three of those things and then it really is the best athlete wins. So a course like this where you have the opportunity to test all sort of three of those areas of, right. of yourself is pretty awesome. <laughs> and, and that sort of a year away from racing, mm -hmm. did, did it, during that time that it was it just focusing on training was it sort of getting away from it because what's hard is it's one thing to know okay everything's canceled yeah it, the hardest part is we're not quite sure it yeah. might be on it might not so you better keep training yeah how did you deal with all that yeah I mean it's no secret that I'm becoming an older athlete oh come <laughs> you on know, now. yeah exactly seasoned so, yeah I'm, I'm a seasoned veteran yes and so for me I actually took it almost as a sabbatical I took time to step away from the sport and sort of refill my cup and refresh my, my mind and really take note of what I want to get out of the, the last stages of my career. And um, I trained, but it wasn't specific, you know, no. and I definitely didn't do, I didn't push to get to the few races that there were. It was like, I'm gonna take this step back and work on a few other areas of my life. And then hopefully when it is time to return to racing, I'll be a, a better athlete for it. And um, I don't regret the decision. I think I did a lot of self growth in that in that time. And um, yeah, it just helped me realize that I'm more than just a triathlete, you know? And yeah. I think for a while, like that was my biggest fear about 
you know, ending my career, what it was going to look like is like, who are you if you're not a triathlete? And so for me, just to take the opportunity to spend time with my husband and ride a bike for fun and yeah, just realize like, oh, I actually really do enjoy these things. And you don't have to be staring at a power meter or staring at your training peaks graphs and right. you can still be an athlete without races on the schedule. So yeah, it was, it was an interesting time. I can't say it was, it was a bit uncomfortable. <laughs> Well, financially, For, it's yeah, hard. Yeah, yeah, there's no races. There's none yeah. coming in. Yeah, and also mentally, just um, yeah, it was tough. But um, I, I feel excited that it's back. And like I said, it's been cool just being around town and seeing people again. And um, people aren't, you know, masked up. And yeah, I don't. I yeah. mean, I I don't know. It just feels like things are back to right. how it was before. And that's, um, it's, it's just really refreshing. I mean, there's two ways to look at that. You, as somebody who's, like you said, towards the end rather yeah. than the future. It's, you go, oh my God, I'm losing a year towards a really tough, I, I can't afford to yeah, lose yeah. a year. Or you can look at it, you know what? I think I need to recharge a little bit. And yeah. maybe this is that opportunity. Yeah. Yeah, no, definitely. And like I said, it was nice just to be able to, um, we live in Bend, Oregon, where yes. there's tons of trails. And so I probably spent more time on my gravel bike than I did my time trial bike. But that translates over well. That makes you a strong athlete. It gives you those bike handling skills. You're able to go ride for like six or seven hours and you still have to practice the nutrition. It's just in a different way. Right. Um, so yeah, it was, it was fun to like take a break and then come back. <laughs> now, are you already qualified for Kona? Or do you have to no. you have to try? Hopefully you'll yep. do that here. So yeah, that's uh, I have a few goals for this race. Right. And one of the goals is to leave with a golden ticket for Kona. Um, right. I would love to do 15 world championships before my career's over. So that's probably one of my top goals for uh, this weekend. I don't <laughs> think there's that many people who've done 15. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's really cool. And uh, the fact that this one is in St. George and not in Kona bother mm -hmm. you at all? Yeah, you know, at first I was, it was not necessarily hard to wrap my mind around. It's like, it is what it is. Right. This is These are the cards we're given. And um, I initially approached it as like, oh, it's just a spring Ironman. Not yeah. going to be that big a deal, you know. Right. But then you get here and you start doing the interviews and you train on the course. And um, yeah, I think um, it's super cool that it's here. And I mean, certain luxuries, like I got to drive here with my husband. Yes. We brought our dog, you know. And so it's like, when else are you ever going to be able to drive to a world champion? You know, I've never drove to Kona. <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah. a really good so, point yeah it is pretty cool that um it's just it's just different but um i think it's it's kind of cool like i think it's going to leave a lot of question marks in the race too you know i was thinking the other day when i was running that like every year in the energy lab you can kind of tell where you are like all right there's the leader here's where I, you know so it's like if you're in the energy lab with the leader you're having a good race you know right. whereas at this here Who like knows? Where? you, you don't know what like everything's so new and unknown and it's also different dynamics we got a wetsuit swim so it is kind of cool that it's a blank slate for everyone it's a course we're familiar with because of the half right but um i think there's a lot of question marks and that's kind of cool that it's this unknown versus like you know a bit more kona can be predictable as unpredictable as it is but right. <laughs> <laughs> well, what was cool in, in 19 for the world shutdown, you mm -hmm. won Ironman Wisconsin. Yes. There, right? After <laughs> yeah. the second year in a row. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That had to be pretty cool. Yeah. No, um, Wisconsin, such good memories of that course. And again, it's just as a course that suits my strengths as an athlete. And um, that was a formula that I really enjoy. And so hopefully we'll do something similar this year. But I enjoy doing an Ironman. And then you kind of get to Kona and you don't have this pressure. Like it felt, to me felt like less pressure because it's like, all right, I've won an Ironman. Yes. Yeah, I can use the fitness from that and um you know maybe the pressure is a bit less in Kona and then I seem to always do well in Kona after it so um I probably will be looking for something similar this year but we'll see <laughs> and the rest of the rest of your schedule after this yeah it's all everything's up in the air I kind of want to see if I get that Kona slot right. on Saturday and then um we'll determine what it'll look like after that so so <laughs> when you look back at your career mm -hmm. and we, I, we already went through the ridiculous <laughs> numbers uh, what do you look back at as your best race yeah, it's hard to say. I actually was just did an interview on this and it's like you don't remember the races, but what I remember are like the people I've met right. and things like that are a bit more what um, come to the front of my mind. But um, for sure, the race in Austria, I raced there twice and won both times. And the second time I won and set the American yeah, record and just killed it. Yeah, it was just racing in Europe is such a unique experience and something that yeah, I mean, the crowds, the people, the culture, um, everything I loved about it. So the races in Europe, um, for sure, are, are top in my memories. And then um, Wisconsin's been a lot of fun as well. And then I've had some Konas that um, are, I mean, every Kona, you don't forget. <laughs> no, <laughs> so, you don't forget. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And you've, you've been 
what a Kona, fifth, eighth, tenth. Uh, you've done it all. Yeah. I like to hold down the tenth the tenth place spot in Kona. I've been tenth like three or four I times. I know, yeah. right? <laughs> so. But, but it's, how have you adapted to uh, being a seasoned mm. triathlete, right? Because yeah. you have to change things a little bit as, mm -hmm. you, as you age. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think um, I've relied a bit more on the strength training and just being a durable athlete. Mm -hmm. And then just being smarter. I think um, when I was younger, maybe I didn't listen to my intuition as much. It was just the coach would give me the training plan and I would do it till I went through a brick wall and <laughs> then I'd pay the consequences. Right. And so I feel as if um, I'm a bit more consistent now with my training, but my training is not as glamorous as it used to be. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean so, that is glamorous? Yeah, exactly. So I'm missing a lot of those big epic crazy days that I used to do, but those days also you have to pay to play. Um, so I would say I'm more consistent of an athlete and I do a better job of just, yeah, following that gut instinct of, you know, I'm tired, I'm gonna pull back a bit today, or I feel good, I'm gonna push a bit more. So it's a more of a collaboration with the, the coaching, whereas the coaching used to be like, here's what you do and I would do it no matter what. Um, yeah, and now and yeah I'm, I'm smarter. Collaboration. <laughs> yeah, but still not all the way smart. Never. Well, <laughs> still make mistakes. Yeah, yeah, and, and how long? Do you want to keep going? Yeah, I, um, I'm not sure. You know, I think, yeah. yeah. I mean, I think for sure I would love to get to 15 Konas. And, yes. Um, but there is a small itch inside of me that needs to be scratched to try some, some new other endeavors. A little gravel racing? Oh, uh, yeah. I'm intrigued by um, some trail running and some gravel racing. Yeah. And I would love to be able to embrace those opportunities while I'm still fit and healthy and able-bodied and um so yeah I want to get through this year and um I, and honestly after COVID and then also knowing I'm towards the end of my career like everything is a celebration yes so, like even yesterday when I was doing media stuff it was like how cool is this like in five years these people aren't going to be taking pictures of you there's going to be like a new you know reign of athletes that have moved in and so I think I'm in a place where I'm really appreciative of the opportunities the sport has given me and um and where it's taken me and I, yeah I think I used to take a lot of that for granted so that's pretty cool well, you know <laughs> and I, I think during COVID a lot of us a lot from an age group perspective mm -hmm. You know, you're thinking, oh, you know what? I don't know if I'll do that race this year. I'll do it next year. Yeah. Right? And I think COVID made us realize it might not be a next year. Yeah. You know, we better you know, sort of smoke them if you got them. Yeah. You, you better take advantage of what you have now. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I think it is an opportunity where you just have to capitalize on it. And it's like, yeah, for example, Saturday, if you're feeling good, like I'm going for it because you just don't know how many races you have left. And so, yeah, I don't want to put an end stamp on my career, but it definitely has um, crossed my mind a few times. So I'm going to try not to get too emotional about it in the race and compartmentalize but um i don't know i mean yeah everything has a season so i i realize i, I am getting older and it's gonna have to end eventually so just kind of embracing that and i yeah i think my biggest thing is i just want to be in the moment for right. what i have now because I, I realize it. it's not going to last forever so very cool yeah <laughs> always appreciate you taking time to chat with yeah, us thank you poncho man a little aloha in your day Spread a little aloha around the world and breakfast with Bob. Cheers. And Pacho Man, thanks everybody.